Hello, welcome back to Mining Network. I'm joined with Peter Benke, the head of IR over at Gold Royalty Corp. And we're here in uh, the Precious Metal Summit at, in Colorado. Uh, Peter, good to see you. Good to see you too, Peter. Um, for those less familiar, just a quick overview of Gold Royalty. Yeah, so Gold Royalty is a relatively new royalty and streaming company. Uh, we were born out of a company called Gold Mining Inc., a development stage company. And we wrote royalties on that company's assets, put them into Gold Royalty Corp., completed our IPO March of last year. Wow. Since then, we've been really busy, uh, done corporate M&A, royalty financings, picked up third-party royalties, and now have over 200 royalties, uh, primarily in the Americas. Uh, strategy going forward is to continue to accretively build our portfolio, uh, build our cash flow profile, and give superior returns to our shareholders. Awesome. And could you just remind us of sort of what the current uh, capital structure is in the company? So. Yeah, so we have 134 million shares outstanding. Uh, 10 million warrants uh, publicly traded that were issued as part of our uh, uh, IPO uh, and, and some employee stock options as well. So relatively clean capital structure. We have a $25 million credit facility with BMO that we just renewed this week. Uh, and share price is roughly 270 right now with the recent pullback in the markets for a fully diluted market cap of roughly $400 million. We're traded on the New York Stock Exchange America. Okay. I mean, you're 400 million market cap already. Like you said, you've got 200 royalties, 10 in production. Uh, how, how have you done it in such a short period of time? What, what's, what's the strategy behind this? Yeah, well, I think in the royalty and streaming space, more so than anywhere else in the mining industry, scale really matters. You look at the biggest players in our sector, Franco, Wheaton, Royal Gold, they all trade at two to three times at asset value. The rest of us, really the small caps within the sector, we're all at one times or below one times after the recent sell-off. Uh, and our view is that by creating critical scale, by building that critical mass to have liquidity and be a meaningful investment for investors, uh, we can achieve that premium multiple and, and have that re-rate in our price and net asset value. Okay. Um, you're talking about net asset value there. Is that, do you think that's the fairest way to, to value a royalty company? And, and what, what sort of multiples should, do you think inferior in an ideal world should, should that be based on? Yeah, so effectively the net asset value is just the present value of the future cash flows from a portfolio. Royalty companies, it's a relatively simple business model. It's just a bunch of agreements getting cash flow. Uh, but our view is to get that premium multiple to be above one times, it's on the upside that you have in those assets. It's from having very high quality assets with exploration upside that goes beyond what you're modeling in your cash flow model. And that's why you see the majors getting those premium multiples. They're the highest quality assets with the most upside. And uh, that's what we're striving to build at Gold Royalty well, as well. Let's, let's talk about your assets. Because like I said, you've got 10 in production at the moment. Maybe you can run through what sort of cash flow that's providing the company at the moment. Um, and yeah, just run us through, through that side of the portfolio. Yeah. So right now, as you mentioned, 10 cash flowing assets uh, focused in Quebec, Ontario, Nevada. Our core asset are, are really in development stage currently. Uh, three cornerstone assets in our portfolio are on the three largest gold mines in North America. Canadian Malarctic, Canada's largest gold mine, we hold a 3% NSR over that asset. It's set to go into production in 2023, the Odyssey Underground project. It'd be a good step change in our revenue profile. Uh, the Cote Gold project, we hold a 0.75% NSR over that project, and it's set to go into production in 2024. Mm -hmm. And then more in the midterm, mid uh, we hold a royalty over the Gold Strike mine, specifically the REN project, which is the underground northern extension, Barrick's key asset there. Yeah. Uh, this is really going to give us revenue growth in the next three to five years. Uh, analyst consensus give us a 60% compound annual growth rate out till 2025. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, it's where we get really, really excited to to see higher revenue. We have six million in revenue this year, looking closer to 20 million uh, by 2025 with that revenue growth I mentioned. But beyond 2027, 2028, Odyssey's fully ramped up, Cote's fully ramped up, Ren's entered production, we're looking at beyond $50 million in revenue. Obviously, that's, that's still a little while away if you're an investor looking at this right now. What's the current strategy in terms of adding additional value? Because obviously, you've got an M&A strategy and Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't mind hearing just a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Yeah, I, and I think what we've done in the past 18 months, like I said, 180 royalties acquired in a year and a half, we we'll look at everything and anything, and, and if it makes sense on an accretive basis, then, then we'll pursue it. Whether that be corporate M&A, looking at other royalty companies, uh, as I mentioned, putting that scale together creates value in this space. Uh, we've done royalty financings. Uh, we recently did a royalty financing for Monarch Mining, uh, helping the restart of the Beaufort Mine in Val d'Or. And we've picked up third-party royalties like our Cote Royalty in Ontario. We do have a fourth leg to our growth 
strategy uh, in acquiring Ely Gold royalties and Abbott CB royalties in 2021. We didn't just acquire those assets, we brought in the human capital as well. A gentleman named Jerry in Nevada, a gentleman named Glenn in uh, Glenn Mullen in Abbott CB. They prospect, state claims, and then vend this out to explorers or developers, and we retain a royalty on the back end. We effectively generate those royalties for free. So continue to grow the portfolio. Uh, it's Multiple means. Okay, and what's what's the main focus at the moment? Is it through consolidation? Obviously, we're seeing a lot of consolidation in the royalty space at the moment. Mm -hmm. Is that is that one of the key strategies? Would you say because of, we we did see the elemental? Yep. Uh, there's more of a hostile type takeover, wasn't it? That you were you were trying to push through, didn't go through. But um, is that the sort of arrangement that you're going to sort of look to do moving forward? Or yeah, no, I, I think there's still lots of room for consolidation yeah. in this space, and we'll continue to evaluate different opportunities out there and the element situation, just differing views of value uh, yeah. at the end of the day and wish them all the best. No, no hard feelings there at all. Yeah, of course. Um, but even they went out and merged with Altius after that. And, and I think they, they see the sense in consolidation is good for our space. Uh, we've seen the Sandstorm and Nomad deal. We saw Royal Gold take a great bear. Uh, but there's still a lot of royalty and streaming companies. And uh, we need to the scale of uh, guys at the smaller end of, of the sector. OK. Um, just looking, I guess, in a over the next 12 month period. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's an ideal outcome for this company? Obviously, we're, we're in a scenario at the moment where the gold price has fallen a little bit, but I don't know what your consensus is on, on that. But 12 months from now, where, where, where does this company want to be? Yeah, I, I think the organic growth in our portfolio is coming online. But, but as you mentioned, that's beyond that 12 month period. Yeah. So we're gonna to continue to evaluate opportunities. That's our job. We're in a constant state of due diligence, looking at opportunities to grow the portfolio. Uh, and if we can pick up new assets, uh, near term cash flowing or key development stage assets in the next 12 months, uh, I think that that'd be a success. Uh, of course, with regards to the market, frankly, as you mentioned, the gold price, it's it's out of our control and we can only focus on what we control as, as a company. And that's to be disciplined uh, with uh, how we deploy our capital and make sure that any acquisition we do make is, is accretive for our shareholders. Do you think, because uh, I'm looking at this at the moment, there's, there's quite a few royalty companies in this space now, mm -hmm. uh, especially over the last couple of years. I mean, obviously you're a new entrant in a way, but you've grown very successfully. Um, how hard is it now to, to really compete, say, buying from a mining company a royalty, especially a good tier one gold royalty uh, asset? There's, there's so many players in this space now. No, it's it's a great point, and it's an incredibly competitive market well, with some of the purchase prices we've seen on, on recent acquisitions. Uh, I would say that our, our management and board really do set us apart as a company, yeah. a really punch above their weight in terms of a small cap royalty company. David Garofalo, our German CEO, he's the former CEO of Gold Corp prior to the largest merger in uh, the gold industry ever. Uh, and with that collective experience on our board and management comes a lot of connectivity. Yeah. Almost all of our acquisitions are based on relationships, uh, come in and, and we transact on a bilateral basis in, in most instances. And through that bilateral relationship is how we can price these acquisitions at you know, accretive uh, metrics for, for our shareholders. Do, do you see where we are in the market at the moment? Do you see this as a good buying opportunity for the company? And, and how much, say for example, you are looking at opportunities at the moment. Mm -hmm. What uh, You were talking about lines of credit. How, what, what sort of, how, how big are the deals that you can do at the moment? How much credit can you, can you draw on? How much sort of cash flow can you draw on? Yeah, I, I think relative to a lot of players, we have good access to capital, again, through that connectivity. We've got our credit facility. Uh, we, we do have an ATM in place to, to access markets. But as I mentioned, with where our currency is trading now, would want to see a very well-priced opportunity to, to utilize that, that liquidity. Um, but when you in the fall in the gold price, where things are at right now, I think that really does speak to the opportunity for the royalty and streaming companies. Uh, I spoke to a bank earlier today, and equity markets are, are shut for a lot of explorers and juniors. Uh, and, and if they need capital, uh, the royalty and streaming companies are, are a good non-dilutive way if they don't want to issue shares at 52-week lows. Awesome. Peter, thanks for giving us an update. No, really appreciate it. Thank you.